The purpose of this video is to compare the older Great War Kobe models with the newer Great War Kobe models. I am a huge fan of Kobe bricks of Poland and also have a huge interest in the history of World War I. So when Kobe came out with kits of tanks from the Great War, I was super delighted. But first, here's a little bit of prototype history of each of these tanks. The British Mark I was the first tank to ever enter combat in 1916. It was developed with hope of breaking the stalemate of the Western Front. The Mark V tank entered service in 1918. By then, the rear steering wheels had been abandoned as essentially useless. By then, the tank used a much simpler steering and drive mechanism, reducing the number of crew. The extra clutchman of the Mark I had by then been eliminated. Fun fact, the word tank was used to confuse potential enemy intelligence, gathering wind of the project. So the big tracked hulls the Brits were testing were referred to as water carriers or tanks. The French Renault FT, referred to as FT-17 after World War I, was first in service in 1917. It saw use by Germans as an internal security vehicle in World War II. The French referred to them as mosquitoes, sort of like swarming the enemy. Anyway, it's the first modern tank, revolutionary in having the first completely rotating turret, and the layout of crew, tracks, and engine in the back is still the standard template used on tanks today. Fun fact. General Patton of World War II fame was a junior officer operating FTs in combat during World War I. The Germans were rather surprised at the appearance of British Mark I tanks. Some soldiers fled in terror, which must have warmed the hearts of the British planners. The Germans' answer was the A7V. Compared to the Mark I, it was a rush job. They came into action in 1918. The machine was considered a failure. In the ululating, churned-up terrain of no man's land, the thing would sometimes turn over. While considered a combat failure, the A7V was never tested in urban warfare, where it may have done very well. The only tank-to-tank -tank battle in World War I was fought between three A7Vs and three Mark IVs on April 24, 1918. That battle was somewhat brief and was essentially a draw. Fun fact, the A7V had a minimum crew of 18. Not only was the inside cramped, hot, full of vibration and noisy, but one would have had to cope with the smells of engine oil exhaust, cannon and machine gun propellant, and 17 other farting, sweaty soldiers. Now let's move on to the models. First up, the first ever tank to see combat. Now, this is not a direct comparison of the same tank, obviously. This is Kobe's Mark I from several years ago. Great tank, great kit. And this is Kobe's Mark V, which is very recent. And this is the one you see at the Tank Museum in Bovington, UK. In fact, I got this particular kit from the gift shop at the Tank Museum. Awesome gift shop, awesome museum. One day I'll get there. I live eight time zones away though, so we'll see. Kobe's Mark I, of course, has the steering wheels on the back. Uh, they do not actually steer. And it's got, you know, the larger guns here in the side sponsons. I like the opening hatch at the top. Overall, the dimensions of the tank look pretty good. The two front hatches did not come with anyone in them. Uh, so what I did was I rigged up the body and the head of two Lego minifigures and stuck them in there. Just so that you could see, I know it's hard on video, but when you're looking at the thing, you can actually see there's someone in there. This is a wonderful model of the Great War tank, and I just love it. When I found out they were coming out with a Mark V male, I thought, oh, yay, yay, I've got to get one. It even has the unditching beam that rides up here. They would attach this beam to the tracks if they were stuck. And as they move the spinning tracks around, of course, it would go underneath and hopefully give them some traction. Unlike the opening hatch in that tank, you take this piece off and you can put your commander there if you want. Um, I prefer the opening hatch, although this looks really, really good. There are no opening hatches on the front, but again, it looks really, really good. There is a machine gun position at the back with the opening door. And there is the mis machine gun positions on the side sponsons and also the shorter barreled gun. I didn't put together the gun as in the kit. Well, I did at first, but you could actually see the claw piece. You can see the claw piece where it pivots on it. And I didn't like that. So I redesigned the inside a little to hide that. And I think it looks better. If you want to see how I did that, I'll include a link at the end of this video. My overall impressions is that this model is much more refined over this one. It's a beautiful model. It's more refined. It's a little more realistic, which of course they're, they're brick tank models. Um, how realistic are you going to get? But it's just lovely. Now this one they're saying is one to 35 scale. This one's a bit bigger. The only thing I don't like about this one, and it's just personal choice, I like the bigger tank because I run all of my Kobe, World War II stuff included, with 
my live steam trains. Here's a couple of clips. So naturally, I like the bigger ones better because the trains are bigger. In fact, even though these are bigger, they're still under scale size for the trains. I let that go. I'm just going for the sort of atmosphere of the thing as opposed to fine scale modeling in this case. I wish this was bigger. But again, does that affect the model? No, it's still a great model. Now on to the second of the tanks I'm looking at today to enter combat. Here is the French Renault FT. The older FT scales with the British Mark I of Kobe, and the newer one is one of 35 and scales with the Mark V. As mentioned, for this reason, I prefer this tank for me because I run them with my trains, but look at this little gem. So let's look at the earlier Kobe product. Turret rotates fully. There's a spot to put your commander up there. The gun elevates. This is not the original shovel. I like this shovel better, so put it there. Like all of the Kobe tanks in this video, all these things are pad printed. There are no stickers anywhere. This one has the nice detail here on the back of uh, an engine compartment. Overall, very nice. This is not prototypical though, because the FT tank had solid wooden front wheels right here. Now onto this little gem. This looks a little more like the wooden piece that would have been there. The decoration is amazing. I love all the colors and the, oh, I just love it. Now this one is smaller. There's no actual engine compartment in there. The turret does rotate, but there's no opening hatch on the top and the gun doesn't elevate. So do I like this one better? Yes. Do I like the decoration of this one better? Absolutely, this is a gem. Also, the side profile. The profile here is a little closer than this one. There was a strong angle up here and a big front wheel. This one almost captures it. This one less so. Now, would I choose between the two? Well, this one looks amazing. It's a beautiful little gem. This one is bigger for me for my trains and has more working parts for staging, you know, pictures and whatnot. Pardon the pun, but I really dig this two-piece shovel. This little guy was hand delivered by Craig at Brick Army Canada. So the fun today is because Craig is here from Brick Army Canada, he's over from Vancouver, and he's brought me this World War I thing. Oh yeah, which I'll build forthwith. Now on to the last of the tanks in my video to enter the war, the German A7V. Here is the Kobe product from several years ago. The gun traverses this way, but it doesn't go up and down. Uh, we've got some machine guns. The door opens and there's a bit of a flat open spot in there, but not much. Overall for a brick model, a very nice representation. It was a fun build, really like it. The hatches in the, up here all open, there's nobody in them. And you can put your tank commander up in here. Now on to the newer product. Again, it's one to 35 and more scaled to the FT and the Mark V. Beautiful product. This gun will not elevate like on the other one. The machine guns are finer though. They're much finer models. Beautiful, beautiful. Hatch is open on the top. This one rolls better than this one. And I think it captures the track design based on the Holt tractor quite well. One little bugaboo is it seems like every time I pick this tank up, by accident, I knock off one of these. They're so easy. This, see, look, ah, this piece, you, you breathe on it and it pops off. I might put some white school glue on there. And of course the white school glue is, uh, you know, won't harm the plastic and you can wash it off if you want. It's not gonna harm the, the value of the model any. Like on this one, this door does open, but there's a much greater surprise making this a truly awesome model. Both sides come up and you have a full interior with engine ammunition boxes, loaded machine guns, oh, artillery rounds. My goodness gracious, this is just an amazing, oh, look at that, look at that tank. Look at that track, the Holt tractor movement there. Oh, this is wonderful with a full interior. Oh, please let there be a Mark I or Mark V with a full interior, please, please, please. Just moving these over for the final shot and I did it again. By the way, I also got this from Craig. It is an interesting point that the French ended the war with the best tank, the British with the middle of the road tank, and the Germans with the worst tank. Fast forward a couple of decades, and at the beginning of World War II, the Germans had the best tanks, the British had middle of the road tanks, and the French had amongst the worst tanks. Curious. What are you saying, Terry? Of course the Germans had the best tank! I hope you've enjoyed my comparison. <gasps> yes, dog. I hope you. I hope you've enjoyed... <laughs> Goodness. I hope you've enjoyed my comparison of the Kobe... <gasps> Yes, doggy. I, great. I hope, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed 
Goodness, now I'm lost. Let's try that again. I hope you enjoyed my comparison of the earlier Kobe Great War tanks with the later Kobe Great War tanks. I really love them all. I'll leave a link to Kobe's main website in the description of this video. Please consider liking, subscribing, sharing. What do you think of those tanks, eh? Yeah, you like them. Thinking of my dog, now Kobe, if only it'd make the other British tank of World War I, the Mark A Whippet.